Fans do not want this. That in regards to Kizuna Ai, who back in February 2022 had held her last concert and went on an indefinite hiatus. But recently her project team have released an anime featuring the VTuber, with many people interested in the concept of bringing her to life in the anime. BB Queenie, the honey VTuber, tweeted, okay, gonna watch this VTuber anime on Crunchyroll. Let's see what the retired Kizuna Ai has been working on. And the VTuber Clover Chibi saying, why haven't I seen more people talk about this? The plot of the anime involves Kizuna Ai disappearing for five years with another VTuber taking the top spot. It follows a young girl Miracle on her journey to be a VTuber and features scenes that really hit home, such as this scene in regards to VTuber avatars, saying if we pick it, does that mean we get to keep it? Only to be told, of course not. Copyright for an avatar resides with its creator. The designs themselves are copyrighted too. But it was in episode three where Ambler captures this screenshot of Miracle talking about NFTs, tweeting, just in case anyone's wondering about how that Kizuna Eye anime thing is going. Teddy quote retweeted tweeted this saying, these frames were after the airing of episode 3. Needless to say, fudge NFTs. Further clarifying, the discussion on NFTs, as far as they're aware, is only mentioned in this episode as part of a so-called educational segment on technologies included to VTubing. However, this did not stop any of the negative reactions coming in, such as this one, with one user saying, the anime is fan fiction trying to make a brand out of Kizuna Eye's corpse. It isn't really about VTubers, which is fine since it's in its own fictional universe. But moments like this show how out of touch with VTuber culture, this show is. Kaya Morningstar tweeted, Bro, the Kizuna Ai anime is talking about NFT like it's a good thing. While another user simply says, the Kizuna Ai anime is lame now. Pix, the interdimensional VTuber, said, I was joking when I said the Kizuna Ai show would be an NFT, but the writers weren't. Another reaction to the anime said, I am dumbfounded when Vanity and Miracle talked about this. I'm just watching the anime to screenshot the Kizuna Ai scenes. And another user said, I've seen absolutely no one talk about the Kizuna Ai anime. And the moment I see someone, it's because they're pointing out that they're showing what NFTs are, and they're trying to promote it in the anime. What a shame. Meanwhile, Damien tweeted, anyone who has actually followed Kizuna Ai would be disappointed but not surprised. Before her hiatus, they announced they were doing NFTs with her. We all just hoped they would sweep it under the rug. One user shared a similar feeling, saying, I honestly thought this anime was going to be part of a rehabilitation project to try and recover from the whole NFT debacle, not double down and embrace it. This, as Gigi tweeted, was wondering what Kizuna Ai was up to, because they left to do NFTs. NFT stuff originally, but it looks like it was to make an NFT anime. LOL. All the while, a brand new video game from Kizuna Eye is being released next month. Kizuna Eye Touch the Beat is a rhythm game with VR capabilities similar to Beat Saber. In Hololive news, we check in with Holopro staff member A Chan as she continues to learn various English phrases, with her latest phrase being IYKYK, with her use case example being A Chan can't wait to enjoy her weekend. If you know, you know. And then she goes on to say, Everyone in Hololive is say so. If you know, you know. Next up, we visit Holopro Metaverse Hollow Earth. We've just released some information and updates on future event schedules, such as a replay of the mini concert hosted by Kali and Azki Proto Live. They have also mentioned a Proto Live 2 due to take place around summer this year. Hollow Earth have released an announcement in regards to users' accounts, tweeting, due to the Twitter API specification changes, users may not be able to log in via Twitter and they recommend authenticating with other services. In other news, we turn to the snow elf Yukihana Lamy, who is releasing a completely new sake called Yuki Yatsuki, favorite model. In collaboration with Meiri Shuriwi, Lamy went on to tweet, if you like dry sake, this is perfect for you. The managing director of Meiri Liquor, Takahiro Kato, went on to say they had a tasting session with Lamy last summer, where she tried a number of different sake, and they took the elements of the ones she liked and put them into this one. He further tweeted the label created by Japanese manga artist, Abara Heki, saying, I really love the illustration as it shows Lamy's love for sake, and then proceeded to join her membership, saying, finally, please teach me a lot, Sam. Pies. Next up, we take a look at some other collaborations, this time with the group Shiraken, that is Suisse, Noel, Flair, Polka, and Miko. Miko is still experiencing some sad news, as she tweets, Sakura Miko loses Puyo Tetris tournament, and my Twitter verification mark has been erased. Shiraken are collabing with Animate to release some travel-themed goods, which include acrylic stands, luggage tags, tote bags, and many more. Perfect for traveling to the country of Taiwan, where you can visit the Hololive Cross Capsule Collaboration Cafe. The account tweeted, After weeks of discussion between Capsule and Cover, we're going to release new limited merch available exclusively at the cafe. Mini blocks and canvas zipper pouches will be available for the various talents. And on the topic of merch, you have until April 23rd, purchase any merchandise for the upcoming Hollow EN concert, Connect the World. Achan posted a photo of the live merch, along with a new model and second best girl, saying, A mannequin appears in the office. There is also a hat, which I don't think we've announced yet. Another upcoming collab involved a variety of 
talent across EN, JP, and ID, and is a collaboration event with Kanda Festival, where they will sell some original collaboration goods that include newly drawn illustrations, such as those drawn by Takuya Fujima, as well as Ikomochi and Hanamori, who drew Oli and Kobo. Kobo was recently caught by Kanauru performing at a train station in Japan. Live ID will also feature in an official fan book that's coming soon. And the recent third anniversary merch for Muna was modeled by the best girl Yago, this being a backpack designed by Hyde, while Yago then went on to model Yopi's third anniversary jacket. In other news, we turn to Holostar's Kishido Tenma, who celebrated their birthday recently and announced they will be releasing a new song every month for memberships only, with the first song releasing on April 30th. As part of the birthday celebrations, Tenma also released a dating sim game called my Night is Noisy. Commemorative merch was released and Tenma also uploaded a cover of Yesterday to his channel. Lastly, this is your reminder that the archive for Hololive's Our Bright Parade will end on the 21st of April. So be sure to grab your tickets and watch the VOD before the deadline. But if you're in Japan, there is a Super Expo after party. It costs 95,000 yen or about $700 and is a one night, two day celebration, which includes a hotel check-in, travel on a special chartered train called the Hololive Express, two exhibition parties and a fan meeting of Matsuri, Holka, Laplace and Iroha. Next up, with more news, I hand you over to my co-host Heidi. Take it away. Hi everyone! Starting off, we check in with V Reverie, a Singapore-based VTuber agency, announcing their new Kohai from their upcoming second generation Odyssey, with each of the new members quite literally giving us a sneak peek of their models. Starting off with the world's greatest and cutest treasure hunter, Cherry Lupina, Demon Queen raid boss, Ren Ayana, Wandering Tiger Warrior Erika Biako, and Seer of the Lake Akiko Sushi. So be sure to keep an eye out for more information closer to their debut, as I'm sure fellow V Reverie talent Ophelia Midnight will make sure of it, as she says here that this will be all she will talk about until then. But also debuting a new generation is Sony Music's virtual talent development and management project V. Introducing to us their fifth wave of talents, Dev E, featuring guardian dog Amaniwa Yae, salamander bartender Kokuyo Lira, and Gepaku Lui. This wave is set to debut on April 26th in this order, as we anticipate what these talents have in store for us all. Moving on, we have Akio Air's Athena Nightingale who had held a 48-hour donathon just this past week, and now the talent is set to head to Japan for a three-week vacation. and can't even sleep due to the excitement, as she can't wait to see Fuyumi Toba and production kawaii's Lua Asuka there, along with the talent's academy friends as well. So we all wish Athena a safe trip and a fun time with her friends in Japan. And lastly, we check in with Lucid Multimedia, who similarly announces that their talent, Angelina Kumalo, will be taking a two-week break from her activities. Though it seems that the agency had tried to convince the talent to do so, instead of the other way around. Lucid Multimedia writes that after weeks of hard work, we finally convinced Angelina Kumalo to finally take a break. She will be resuming her activities on May 1st, but until then, she will not be doing any scheduled streams. However, Angelina still may plan on doing Gorilla streams, though her agency sure hopes she would rest instead. So be on the lookout. Thank you, Heidi. And that is all for this episode. As always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below. Send in your VTuber news to our Discord, and we record live on Twitch.tv. We'll have more things VTubers say for you soon.